Well, good morning and welcome to Tuesday, the 19th of May, 2020. I'm without my faithful camera person today. Jackie's ducked into Brisbane. So uh, we'll do the best we can with, uh, with this moment. The plaque I want to draw your attention to today is actually hanging on this marvellous... Uh, it's actually not a marlin, it's a sailfish. Thank goodness my, my fishing buddies didn't catch me up on that one. The sailfish story, but the marlin story was yesterday. But this, this plaque, Home is Where Your Story Begins, is a little plaque that Jackie picked up. Um, oh, I just did one of those off-handed little crafty sort of arty places. And it kind of really strongly resonates with us about the place of home and certainly our home here that we've been introducing you to, but also our forever home. And I remember and I'm reminded of my very good friend, Mark Hobavkovich and his dear wife, Christine, who are now serving God in the United States of America with the Romanian church in planning Romanian churches throughout that vast land. Uh, during our Bible college years, Mark had this natty little song and he used to sing, this world is not my home, I'm just passing through. If heaven's not my home, dear Lord, what would I do? And you know, the, the, the song continues on and, and it's very much the stories that Jesus told that carry the echoes of our forever home, the kingdom of God, the Beatitudes, where the poor are already blessed, the meek are already blessed. There, there's a great reward for the persecuted, the, the Matthew 5 um, stories that he put out and the, the marvellous stories he tells about the sower going to sow and, and the kingdom of God being like a net and and the the story of the reconciling father commonly called the prodigal sons and all of his stories that were crafted to to carry those echoes of home but there was one story or one teaching that he brought to his followers that wasn't an echo it was a direct statement and this is what he said from john 14. john 14 one and following, don't let this throw you. You must trust God. Oh, you trust God, don't you? Trust me. There's plenty of room for you in my father's home. If this weren't so, would I have told you that I am on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on a way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. And you already right know the road I am taking. There are many of us already have people who are in that mansion, that wonderful place that Jesus has prepared for them, the assurity of the security of knowing that there is security for them. My, my dearly beloved brother-in-law, Joe, I know exactly where Joe is. I hope I hope there's a plaque on his wall, on his room, so I can knock on his door and say, G'day, mate, it'll be great to see you. And we all have those friends and family members in that wonderful mansion. But you know something? Our, our, while our room is booked, we actually live in the reality of those tales of home now. The, the way we live now, give out the echoes that speak into our world of light and love and of a different way and a complete assurance. And, and it's the, our homes here where we, we inculcate and incarnate the life and love of Jesus. With our, with our wives, our children. And I know some of us struggle that our kids may waver on the faith journey. But you know something? I think God is much bigger than some of the frameworks that we put around him. And that which we trust to him against that day, he is faithful to keep. And so this morning as we pray, may it be an assurance of knowing our forever home secure, we can live in our temporary home here intentionally. Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful for the mercy and grace of knowing our forever home is secure, that, that there is a mansion, that there is a room, that there is a room with our name on the door, that Jesus one day, on that day, you will come and take us to be with you to live in your home, in that eternal place. And yet there's something about this story too that, that assures us 
that you live in us in the here and now, in the home of our heart, in the heart of our homes. And, and Lord, as in this day of social isolation, this day of, of physical distancing, Father, we pray that there may be that sense of you dwelling with us and we dwelling in you that, that transforms how we go about living through this day of COVID-19. Bless my sisters and brothers listening today in this day, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for listening.